50 pounds of salt. Look, I don't know if this is gonna work. Um, this is probably my most bizarre idea yet, but let's see. cut this thing in half and then I can fold those two halves open and I'll have a big piece to work with. So I just got a new bandsaw and uh, I can't think of a better way to break it in than running 50 pounds of salt through it. All right, so now I've got the book matched piece and I'm gonna glue these two halves together and then I'll have a nice blink to work with. I've rigged up a little wooden dam here and I'm gonna put a little layer of epoxy over the entire thing just to kind of hold the bottom of the guitar together. Um, then after it cures, I'm gonna flip it over and sand the other side. I don't recommend trying to route salt, but uh, it's gotta get done. So this happened, uh, I was trying to drill out the string ferrule hole and I'm not sure if I just went too fast and pressure built up, um, but it looks like the salt under the epoxy cracked. If the epoxy on top is still smooth, it, it kind of looks crazy actually, um, but I don't know, I'm not stoked this happened, but uh, I guess I'll just try to drill out the other hole slower. So I went really slow on this one and I backed the bit out a ton um, and it looks good. So I guess that's just the way to go. I've got this old neck uh, that I built a while back and so I'm just gonna put some oil on it and use this for this guitar. This was easily one of my toughest guitar builds yet. The concept is pretty simple and straightforward, but just working with salt as a material is really difficult. I mean, if I were to drop it even from just a foot high, it's, it's gonna break into a million pieces. 
even now, uh, I'm trying to be as gentle as I can handling it just to avoid anything happening. It's just super brittle. Carving out these areas around the neck pocket on the guitar was pretty much impossible. Uh, I carved them out, but they just continued to kind of chip away. So I wasn't even able to really sand them at all or buff them out, obviously. The rest of the body actually buffed out really nice, uh, and so I was surprised uh, how glossy I was able to get the salt. Aside from that, even the most minuscule amounts of moisture will cause the finish on the guitar to blemish. Um, so that's even just like sweaty hands, slightly sweaty hands touching the body, and you'll see rough marks where you touched it. So just, you know, little things like that that made this build difficult. But the most challenging part about building this guitar was just the wear that salt does to your metal equipment. I probably spent a good five to six hours during this project just in cleaning tools after using them. And that's just vacuuming them, wiping them down, using comp compressed air to get rid of all the salt. Uh, and if I didn't do any of that, this whole workshop would probably be all rested up by now. I wasn't able to be as precise with this build as usual, um, just because I was so worried the entire build about going too far and having this whole thing just break apart. I didn't even use screws to hold the control plate in place, and that's just because the screw holes would be too close to the edge of the salt, and the salt would have just chipped off. So uh, I stuck some wooden blocks on the underside of the plate so that it kind of just pushes in and, and holds in with friction. The salt looks super cool once it's buffed out. It's really clear in areas and just kind of looks like crystals. I also really like how it looks with the backlighting and you can kind of see all the figure in the salt and kind of looks like um, it kind of looks like veins running through the salt. The epoxy on the back I think is pretty crucial to holding this whole thing together. It does look to me like the epoxy is delaminating from the salt in certain areas on the back, kind of like around here where the neck pocket is and I think that's just because there's more pressure right there. Um, and so up to this point, it's doing its job, but as to how this whole guitar will hold up, I mean, only, only time will tell. And that might also be the same kind of where, the blem where I got the blemish from drilling the string ferrule hole. I might have just had too much pressure there and the salt under the epoxy cracked and delaminated. I'm not really sure. The joint here in the middle, I was actually really happy with how it came out. It's uh, a really good seam. You can kind of see some like a white stripe going down the middle and that's just from running the salt through the table saw. It kind of fractures the salt like an eighth of an inch in, um, but the seam is actually really smooth. This guitar is for sure more of a wall hanger than a player. Um, that is if you're comfortable hanging something that weighs, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds on your wall. Uh, I actually haven't weighed it yet, so I'll do that right now. All right. It's heavy. It's uh, 22, 22 and a half pounds. I only made this guitar for the bridge pickup, unlike a standard Telecaster where there's also gonna be a neck pickup. Uh, I was just more worried about losing strength in the body if I also had the neck pickup cavity because that's so close to the neck pocket. So I just kind of took the conservative route with this build in general. I haven't actually tuned this puppy up yet. I've been waiting to film all of this just in the event that when I tune it up, it ends up exploding. Um, so I'll try to get this thing tuned and I'll give the demo a shot. As always, you can follow my work on Instagram at Brillsart. Thank <laughs> you.